I think what he had to say, um, he makes a good point. Basically, we interviewed him yesterday, and what he said to us was that he thinks that actually the problem is with, with the film industry. He said that films at that level, uh, you know, that industry at standard is, is a bit too macho. And he, as a film director, it's not his responsibility as a festival film director to, to change that. He said that he chooses the best quality films uh, and he wouldn't want to just pick a woman because she was a woman. So uh, that's kind of what he had to say on it, really. I mean, there are 21 films in the main competition. So it does seem very disappointing that for the second year in a row in Venice, only one woman has been competing. But he's very much said that it's the industry where the problem is. Um, Netflix uh, this year were, were banned from Cannes in competition. They've been accepted at Venice. Is streaming and streaming films, are they now entering the movie theatre mainstream, do you think? Well, yeah, I definitely think that we're already seeing that. I mean, Cannes' loss definitely seems to be Venice's gain. Um, there are six Netflix movies that are on in Venice. There are three in the main competition. You can see there a poster um, from the Buster Scruggs Coen Brothers movie and also Roma, uh, which is from the Mexican filmmaker Alfonso Cuaron. So there's some really exciting Netflix titles that um, uh, are, are on here. And I think this is a huge talking point. I mean, it was in Cannes, and it no doubt will be uh, still in Venice. Uh, speaking to people about it yesterday, I was speaking to a film critic from The Hollywood Reporter, and he was saying that, in his opinion, speaking to directors and producers, they really don't care if the money for their project comes from a tech company like Netflix or Amazon, or if it comes from, uh, you know, the traditional production company route. And actually, maybe we get to see some very different art house type films that are funded by the likes of Netflix. So, yes, I think that, you know, the future is already here. We're seeing it. And of course, that really helps Venice in terms of overtaking Cannes as one of the major festivals uh, in the calendar. The lineup this year in Venice is, is said to be very strong. Uh, is this a preview, do we think, of, of what we can expect from the Oscars now? Well, I definitely think that that's what we've seen with past Venice film festivals. I mean, when you think back to last year, The Shape of Water was here. Two years ago, it was La La Land. So both of those films went on to do incredibly well during the award season. And this year, as you say, yes, the lineup is is really impressive. I mean, there's huge star power. If we just think about the opening film, which is First Man, uh, so that's Damien Chazelle, who directed La La Land. He's back with this movie. Ryan Gosling is the star. He plays Neil Armstrong. Um, so there's a lot of talk about, about that film already. Of course, not many people have actually seen it yet, but before they've even seen it, there's lots of excitement and buzz and people talking about the award season. And uh, so perhaps that's one that might then go on to, to do really well. But yeah, certainly we have seen that Venice has been the launch for some of the huge movies. Um, there's a lot of buzz and excitement as well around a certain Lady Gaga film. They're not only the star power of a pop star turned actress um, and a first time Hollywood actor director Bradley Cooper, who has directed um, A Star is Born, that film is also getting huge buzz and I haven't seen it yet so far I'm hearing very positive reviews